thanks for joining us today. Uh, I had a very happy conversation with Christopher Nixon Cox, who sits with us today. And Chris and I enjoyed ourselves very much talking politics the way you can talk baseball or the way you can talk market. You just go through the players very quickly. You use last names only, you shake your head, and then you ask another question. So I thought it might be fun for you all, at the beginning of your partisan education, to understand what it's like for the party right now. Uh, the party, although they're your fathers and grandfathers and next door neighbors, the party is made up of people who can speak very quickly over the players and move between them. So I'll do that for you right now about where we are in the Republican nomination cycle for the presidency in 2012. It's a field, you heard their names. I'll give you some background on them, but I think you've heard them enough before. That's the nature of the presidency. This is the first time you heard their names. The important contest begins in Iowa, although it's Iowa and New Hampshire. And all the major players are looking at their chances in these two very different states. The plain state of Iowa, which is a caucus state, meaning that people don't actually vote for the candidate. They gather in living rooms and churches and school districts across the country, and they band together in units in the room, and there's some complicated rules. And that's why, at the end of the evening, it's very difficult to read who's ahead and who's not. Mostly, Iowa is for the media to use your name onto New Hampshire, which is the first polling contest, an open contest, meaning both, sides, both parties can vote for either candidate, any candidate, and the independents can vote. That's why we pay so much attention to New Hampshire. So here we have the presidential field for the Republican Party in 2012 to, to face the just announced President of the United States for re-election Barack Obama. The lead candidate is Mitt Romney, former governor of Massachusetts, who ran unsuccessfully in 2008 for the in the primaries against John McCain, the senator. Mitt Romney is very well known in the party, extremely confident, very vigorous, has a gorgeous family, is a sincere and extremely intelligent man. He spent years growing up in Michigan, the son of the governor. That's important to the Republican Party. The Republican Party likes heirs, likes legacies, very much likes people who stay in the business year after year and generation after generation. Mitt Romney's father was successful and fell just short of being the Republican nominee in 1964 uh, when Barry Goldwater was the party nominee. So the party remembers Mitt Romney's father very well, but Mitt Romney himself has made a distinguished rep uh, reputation in Massachusetts, chiefly for what is known as Romney care. His efforts for health care were significant at the time, this is several years ago, because he left office several years ago. And that is a plus in the general election, but I should understand because of Obamacare and because of the debate the parties conducted this last year since the passing of Obamacare in March of 2010. Uh, Romney's advantage in the general election that he could talk health care is a disadvantage in the primary and will be a disadvantage in Iowa. And New Hampshire. This isn't a, a killer because everybody's got a weakness, but I want to be upfront about Romney's weakness. He does very well in in-trade, and in-trade might be new to you. In-trade is a fun thing where you can bet on the candidates and they give you odds and you can put money on it. And it takes place over a long period of time and it's pretty much like the market. It gives you a sense of a million decisions at once and people put money on it and it makes it more exciting. Well, in-trade has Romney ahead. And that's worth watching. Take a look at it on Intrade. And you'll see who second, third, and fourth is. It'll change a lot in the next year to the Iowa and New Hampshire candidates. But Romney leads an Intrade. Now, the rest of the field divides into two groups. Mr. Cox and I decided just two groups. We're not going to be too sophisticated about this. The two groups are the first tier with Romney. Romney's in the lead. But there's a first tier that can compete with him and the second tier that does not compete with Romney, but will nonetheless appear in Iowa and New Hampshire. I'll start with the second tier first, before I get to the first tier, just because you'll hear these names often. They're often on television. They're often speaking uh, passionately about health care and about social issues. Uh, of the first tier, the second tier, they're very quick, uh, very quick. Michelle Bachman, the 
congresswoman from Minnesota who was going to New Hampshire, I think this weekend, to visit. That's a ceremonial thing to go to New Hampshire. The spring of the year before you join, New Hampshire starts organizing very early. It's aware of its responsibilities to the Republican and Democratic Party in the nomination process. Michelle Bachman represents an outspoken part of the party that's come to be associated with the Tea Party. The Tea Party is not Republican, but it's very close to Republican. And then there's Newt Gingrich. He is a second-year candidate, one Speaker of the House, often on television. Recently, he's been asked to uh, withdraw from his contract, long-time contract with the Fox News because he's a Republican candidate for the presidency. Nonetheless, the former Speaker, who's now in his 60s, uh, is uh, garrulous and sophisticated and clever. And it's said of Newt Gingrich that if one of his ideas of the 100 he'll give you is implemented, we will all be better for it. Newt has lots of ideas. Uh, another third-tier candidate at this point, you'd have to say, is Mike Huckabee, also of Fox News, but he's not been asked to withdraw from his successful television show on the weekend. Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, who was a candidate in 2008 as well, and did very well, especially among the, the social conservatives, people associated with the evangelical movement. That's why he polls so well in Iowa, and if he enters the race, he'll do very well in the caucus state of Iowa. All right, that's the third tier candidates right now. There are other names we can mention, but I want to get on the first tier and give you a chance to ask some questions about this. These are important names, and they're very unfamiliar names, unless you play baseball cards with the party that has Christopher Cox in it. Uh, they're governors. All of them are governors. Uh, Mitt Romney was a governor, and you need to be a governor to play on his field. The reason people are attracted to governors is that they're executives. Uh, the president, in many ways, is the governor of America. Much of the job that the president does is what the governor does in their state capital. There are comparable roles. The first governor to mention of great significance was the man, the only man to, so far, create a, an exploratory committee, which is a ceremonial and necessary financial transformation from yourself as a guy into a president. And he's Tim Pawlenty, former governor of Minnesota. Very well thought of, very young. And I put up a video that you can see on YouTube in announcing his plans to be president. What's significant about Tim Pawlenty is that he was popular in Minnesota for quite some time, remains popular. You will see on his video, however, he chooses to present himself as a jobs and economic recovery guy. He doesn't talk social issues, although he can. He's also significant and is the only presidential candidate in my memory who looks comfortable with a hockey stick. He played hockey, and he's very attractive in a hockey uniform. He can still skate with a pretty good, and I promise you, if he's in the White House, there will be a Washington hockey team that plays on nights, uh, just the way there's been, oh, for example, a golf team now that travels with the President of the United States, Barack Obama. All right, Tim Pawlenty has an exploratory committee. He's very well thought of an intrade. you will go there and find that sometimes he's in the second position to Mitt Romney. He's young, he's attractive. He doesn't have an economic message yet that I can tell you is about growth, but that will come. There's a year to go. Uh, 